program is brought to you by the Southern Institute of Technology. Based in the beautiful surrounds of Wanaka, Georgie P Landscape Architecture has been dramatically improving the look and feel of the landscape since the year 2000. At the helm of the company, Georgie Pinkney is joined by recent graduate Angie Newell. Working together, they have produced some astonishing creative designs that have earned the company a well-deserved reputation of excellence. Yeah, a lot of our um, clients actually approach us because they have seen examples of other work we've done. Um, and a lot of them come to us from word of mouth, so generally we know that they're after something that we think we could do, um, and we use our website a lot to be able to show clients work we've done. With local clients, depending on, on the clients obviously, but often they might have more of a hands-on approach and want to do parts of the garden um, themselves. All clients are different, some will have absolutely no idea of what they want, um, some will have a very set idea, so that's part of establishing our brief, is trying to work out you know, where we're going to go with this job. We sort of work with, um, with their ideas, but um, look at better and, and new ways to use the space. Generally, I, I will visit the site and get a bit of a feeling for it, and obviously find out what the client wants. And then I just generally start on quite a broad idea of encapsulating some of the major elements um, and just working in mainly just with lines and areas, um, working out what's the most important things to start with and you're just really working from a broad scale inwards. And yeah, the clients are often quite, quite a lot of inspiration as well, like their, their personality and what sort of style that garden they like, whether it be formal or, or quite, something quite natural and how they want to use the space. Because we do this every day, it does, things just seem to, to naturally evolve and a lot of that design is actually done with the client at that first meeting where we just sort of talk through ideas and things like that. Um, I mean there's no right answer to a design really so things evolve um, and it's just part of the process that we follow really. Cool, now that we've decided on all the layout and you're happy with that, the next sort of step is to look at all the materials. What I envisage doing here is doing a base of mainly um, the plain natural paper because yep. I'm conscious that using a really detailed one is more inclined to date, we'll sort of go for something really simple, but add a border detail in some places see, of, yeah. of something with a bit more texture like contrast. Yeah, this so here. Things here. Like that. You like that one there? Yeah. That's quite cool because it's got a similar base, and mm. um, we can actually match that paper with that colour. With the colours in there, because that's too busy I think. Yeah, I think that is too. This is really nice, this is actually a local schist. Oh, um, really? Or Crawford Hill schist. Huh. And you can see the difference between having a sealer on it. Um, Oh, we recommend, yeah, see how it's done yeah, here? Yeah. We recommend oh. um, sealing it, it just protects it, it's like varnishing wood or anything like Does that. Does it make it's it protective. more sort of slip resistant? Um, you can get an, a slip resistant, um, you can put an anti-slip in the sealer as well, so oh, that's, okay. that's quite a good option. Because yeah, obviously having smooth rather than a sort of a texture is a bit slippery. And it hurts if you're walking around on yeah, bare so feet, feet all the time. Yeah. Yep. So that's, oh, that's cool. cool. Oh, like, so that's yeah, an those, easy, yeah. easy decision. Yeah. Ooh. And the other thing we would have to think about too is drainage. Um, because normally we'd step down onto the paving, but we, we're wanting to have it closer, coming up the same level as the house. So what we can do is use the channel drain. Oh, yeah. Um, this one I really like because it's narrow, like a lot of them are a lot wider. Yeah. So this would just slot up against, we'll probably have our detail paper next to that one. So you just see a little detail against the wall of the house. Oh, that's um, a good it's idea. really simplistic and easy. And it's just you know really easy to clean. Pop off and, 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 oh, and just clean it out. Yeah, Stacy can thing. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My personal way I design has probably evolved a lot since I first started out because I've uh, had to adapt my designing from um, hand drawing through to computer drafting. We do all our design on AutoCAD now, and um, it's great because we get. Um, say for example a house plan straight from an architect and who uses the same software we can transfer their house plans straight into our sort of format and then start drawing straight away so we save a lot of time. Rather than hand drawing everything out from scratch that we're actually drawing our ideas on the computer and it's taken a long time to sort of to get my brain 
through that, that sort of process because it's not the way I learnt to do things. It's a lot easier to make changes. Um, if, you know, we, we don't just give the client the plan and that's it. Um, we'll often go back and it'll be quite a collaboration of ideas and um, the plan may change four or five times and so it's very easy to do that on the computer. Sometimes if I get really stuck at stuff I'll go back to the old way where I'll print off what I've got, what I call a base plan, which is basically the boundaries and the existing elements and, and the house or whatever we're designing around. And it sometimes it's easier to free it up slightly by getting out with a pen and doing something a little bit freer. When you're designing, particularly in a certain area such as Central Targo, you've obviously got a lot of elements, um, climatic elements you've got to to really think about and I've been lucky enough to be really mentored by the garden centre owners here so I've been able, been able to really work through what does and doesn't grow in Wanaka. But generally we're moving towards using a lot more of the native um, flora, um, particularly kanukas, um, tussocks where appropriate, flowering plants of just simple colour schemes. That depends a lot on our clients' requirements. We often get them to send asset samples or look through books and find examples of the type of garden they like and you can often find similar forms of plants um, that would grow here, um, it, whether it be native plants or just exotic plants with similar forms and so you can get the same sort of look from um, more suitable plants. A huge requirement for a lot of our properties because they're holiday homes is low maintenance um, and with our push towards sustainability we've really got to think about the drought tolerance of these plants. We don't want plants that are going to require irrigation at a high level for years and years. Um, we just really want to be using irrigation for establishment and as a safety catch if we've got a really dry year. We tend to also specify a lot of mass planting. Um, if you have a garden that has say 15 species it's going to be a lot less maintenance than one that's got 150 because each plant has a diff slightly different requirement as far as trimming back and all that sort of stuff. So That's where a lot of people do need guidance out of town is because it is quite a challenging environment in terms of what grows uh, and we are a little bit limited um, so you have to be careful. Over the past nine years we've, we've narrowed down to having two local contractors that we tend to work with most of the time. And that's really nice um, because we get to know their teams and how they work and they know the standard of work that that we require. The fact that we work with two contractors that are really familiar with the way we work means we don't have to always go into the same amount of detail as we would if we were putting that out to anybody. It's really helpful to be able to liaise with the contractor as, as early as possible. Particularly if we're thinking of designing something that's slightly out of the norm um, to make sure that we're not getting the clients excited about something that can't happen. <laughs> And then again we'll get, get them in, um, obviously to go through the plans and things before, before it goes out to price, meet them on site and, and go over things and, and we'll pick up problems again at that stage if there's anything that's not going to work. Once they've done, submitted their price to us, um, it's usually a point that we get to sit down with them and we'll go through and just and see, work through with them and see if there's any places that we could change our spe specifications slightly just to allow um, a more cost effective result for our clients or something that might just be a lot easier for everyone to work through with. So we work quite closely with the contractor throughout that construction phase to just sort of liaise and be the middleman I guess between them and the client. We've learnt to trust our contractors as far as their quality and workmanship and um, they're a really great team to work with really. Well, This is a, um, a design we've got you to look at doing a pricing for. It's, um, it's in, on Brybank Drive yep. and really basically um, pretty straightforward, a um, bit different is the fact we don't have any lawns in this one, but we'll probably need to be looking at staging um, the actual contracting because of the access um, to the site, um, hopefully we'll have some access off the bottom. As far as the planting plan is concerned, the client, um, we, we just feel that they're better to see everything starting to take shape here before they really confirm the plants. Um, we've had to confirm to a certain degree for the resource consent but some of the detail of this may change, but we'll use this at the moment as far as the pricing exercise, um, okay. so they've got a pretty good idea of what that's going to cost. Um, but yeah, pretty much a lot of native plants um, with a little bit of colour. Are we going to, is that all prepped, garden prep wise, as in stripping it all back, or are we pocket planting, what are we going to do with Yeah, the topsoil on that site's pretty standard, so we'll be looking at, um, but pro probably just prepping, because of the slope, yep. we don't want to be 
cultivating all that and yeah. putting too much yeah. fresh topsoil on, it'll just wash away. Okay, so it's Patonk area through here. Patonk here. No um, retaining wall. Access, we've got a bit of a council um, a walkway down here, so we're wanting to link in off here. Okay. So the client can get down to the lake. We've got access from the bottom here? Yeah, we're just, yeah. We're just okay. contacting the clients um, at the moment to find out about that. Cool. Perfect. So you just want to, at this stage, you just want to price price it all up. Yep, and, just get a um, price to start with and then we can um, go back through that with the client and, and see if there's any areas we can make some changes to. Okay. All clients are different. Some can pose real challenges with, with their requirements um, and there's nothing more rewarding than, than seeing the end product and even better, not only when it's first, uh, first finished as far as the contracting is concerned, but as it evolves over time, um, I have a real buzz about going back to gardens I designed nine years ago and just seeing the way they've evolved. Yeah, I, I really like the, the process of seeing your job evolve from the start of construction and see the plan come to life. Um, and as Georgie said, it's nice to come back in a couple of years and, and see. I'm, I'm only getting to that phase where I've, so I've only been working for three years, but starting to see gardens really um, mature because obviously when you're planning a garden, you're planning it for when it's fully fully mature, maybe 10 years down the track. And so you slowly, slowly see it happen and it's a really nice sort of process to watch. It's really re rewarding. <laughs> so what some of the most rewarding jobs are working with clients that really have got no idea and, and managing to come out at the end with them being really passionate about the space that they've got. Um, and yeah, just encouraging people to get into the gardens, get into the landscape. People really do take, start to take pride in their, in their gardens if they've got something that really is them. This program has been brought to you by the Southern Institute of Technology.